What is up, everybody? This is Mike with Tiny Life Big Mission, and my wife, Caitlin, is joining me here. Uh, this segment of the channel, we are going to be doing a little bit of a vlog for our friends and family. As you well know, we're out hiking the PCT, the Pacific Crest Trail, and uh, it's a 2,650 mile hike from Canada, or from Mexico all the way up to Canada. You can do it either direction, but we're going northbound from Mexico to Canada. And people have just asked us what our journey has been like and the things that we've seen. And um, we decided we'd go on ahead and do a vlog to kind of share that with you. So this is going to be a vlog for our first week on the PCT, which we launched on March 3rd. And that end of that week, that was a Sunday, the end of that week was March 9th. So we'll be going over each day briefly kind of what we experienced. So first day, day one, we started out in uh, Campo which is right there on the Mexican border. You can see the big wall that uh, Trump built. It was pretty bad weather starting out. We ended up hiking 10.15 uh, miles that day with 1350 elevation gain. Now elevation gain doesn't necessarily uh, account for altitude difference. It's just how many times you had to go up like climbing flights of stairs. So 1350 is a pretty significant amount of uh, elevation gain for people who are not used to hiking. Uh, for hikers, it wasn't really that much uh, in terms of gain for us. But uh, why don't you go on ahead and share, Kate, kind of what that first day was like. Well, first of all, the weather was definitely bad and we could have very well have like gotten our pictures at the terminus, talked to the ranger got in our little tags for the PCT and then gone back with his mom and her friend to the hotel and started the next day. So we should have done that. Instead, we charged on because we were really excited and we just got soaking wet. Um, maybe not as wet as we have been since then, no. but it was not the most comfortable Start. hiking conditions. <laughs> and at the terminus, we initially got some instruction from the ranger saying like where the best spot to camp was and we missed it. We were like, he gave us like three landmarks and we ended up looking for one that we never saw. I mean, I was looking for kind of all three and still didn't see them, but okay. yeah. Um, but we ended up passing a couple other groups of people who had set up camp a little bit early on to escape the rain and we did not do that. <laughs> we ended up like getting to a point where we we're like okay now it's starting to get dark we really need to set up so we found a campsite that I don't know. it was on the side of a hill it wasn't yeah, even it a, wasn't campsite. Really a campsite we, we just crash landed <laughs> it was miserable the tent kept falling in on us throughout the night we and were on a hill so like we kept sliding down sliding yeah in our sleep and the rain didn't stop so yeah. we woke up to a collapsed tent with water everywhere yeah. <laughs> wasn't the best start but initially it was pretty cool we got to walk through some interesting terrain like just the different biosphere, biosphere that we're in is cool we saw some massive succulents and succulents are kind of one of our favorite things yeah. and they look like the ones that we have in pots at home except for these guys were like this big. huge yeah and saw lots of different plants that we weren't familiar with just never really having spent any time in southern Cal southern california Got a couple um, birds on our life list. Yeah, heard some birds. I was impressed to hear all the birds singing while it was raining. So I felt like that was a little bit of a spiritual pick-me-up <laughs> while we're getting soaked. I'm like, okay, the birds are still happy. They're still out. It's not the worst thing ever. Um, but yeah, it was a good, good start, I think. I mean, well, overall, it was a good start. Our spirits were up even though it was a hard start. Yeah, and <laughs> our perspective on the rain was like, at least we're experiencing the rain the first day, so we know what to expect any other time we get rain on the trail. All right, day two, we walked uh, or hiked 10.25 miles. We were trying to set a pattern of about 10 miles a day starting out. Ended up doing about 1,500 elevation gain that day. And I think it's worthy to note too that at the beginning of our uh, journey, Caitlin was actually starting with a little bit of a handicap. She had uh, about six blisters on her feet um, that happened uh, a week prior to our launch date. We had picked up some new gear and needed to prove it. And so we did a little trial run, uh, like a three night or two night or something like that, three day uh, backpacking trip before we left. And on that trip, 
we didn't hike tons. I think we hiked maybe 30 miles, but the new shoes that we had got for her obviously didn't work out. We ended up having to take them back and they wouldn't take them back. So we were stuck with a pair of shoes that blistered her feet. And that's They're Sierra cheap, Trading so. Post in case if you don't want to do business with them. Um, but uh, we ended up having her start with some pretty gnarly blisters and they kind of got worse as we went. Um, but they're healing up now, total side point. Any rate, that night we ended up uh, camping at a place called Lake Marina, um, which we actually had really nice weather in terms of there wasn't rain or anything like that. Don't mind Indy, the dog in the background. She'll probably bark at some birds while we're talking here. <laughs> She's a super cute puppy. Um, but any rate, uh, it, it did get cold that night. It was below freezing that night, but we were, we had clear skies. Everything was good. What would you say the highs and lows of that day were? I do think that coming into the campground was pretty exciting. Um, there was a gentleman there waiting for his son. So he was kind of following his son along for the first hundred miles or so. And we struck up a conversation with him. He was super kind. It was like super encouraging, but also because it was a campground that had like a spot dedicated to the PCT hikers. We got to hike with a couple other people. Um, so it just felt like kind of like, oh, we're in our little tribe. And we met someone who was hiking a section of it, but she was going south. So she kind of gave us some good insight into what was coming ahead. And I don't know if there's anything like particularly uncomfortable about that day or not great about that day. It was just we. It was a pretty good day. Yeah. We had like set our, all of our gear out on the bushes around our campsite to try and dry out, but it was a really beautiful day. We ended up stopping at uh, Hauser Creek for lunch and we got to soak our feet, which was really helpful. We ran into another ranger and we met one of our first trail buddies, I guess. Like we kind of that was Drew, yeah. and uh, we gave him the name, the trail name, Withdrawn. I think he's kept it, I don't know for sure, but super cool dude. And uh, Dave was the name of the guy who was waiting in his truck for his son. So Dave, if you're watching, hi buddy. It was good meeting you. Um, but yeah, so far I think that day we kind of got to experience the, the coolness of meeting new people on the trail. Yeah, um, definitely. We also met a young guy named Solomon that day as well. And uh, we ended up giving him the trail name Cricket. I think it suits him perfectly. And from what I heard later on, we were hiking uh, just a couple days ago and crossed somebody named Orca. That was her trail name. And she, we had asked her if she had passed anybody coming down. And she goes, oh, I passed this guy named Cricket. And I was super happy to hear that he had <laughs> kept the name and uh, that they were doing good. So anything else to add? Not for day two. Okay. Day three. Day three, we ended up hiking a little bit more, 10.76 miles, and we had 2,000 foot elevation gain. 2,000 foot is a solid day. Like that's, that's a decent amount of up. Um, we camped that night in a group of campers. I think there was probably like six of us. Uh, we were all camped next to this little creek called Fred Canyon Creek. And um, it was clear that night, but it was a little windy and it definitely got cold. It got below 29 degrees that night. Um, what would you say the highs and lows of day three? Uh -uh. Well, I don't know if this was particularly a low, but I've never really encountered ticks before. Like we grew up with them, but I never really saw them. And as we're leaving Lake Marina, we ran into just a day hiker who's like, be on the lookout for ticks. I just pulled one off of me and we were pretty well covered up like we had hoods and sun gloves and long sleeve and long pants and all that but i picked one off of my pants at the campsite and was like oh um so that made me a little nervous but and there's already been a couple hikers that have actually had to get off for some time because they did actually get a tick in their skin so yeah. it's definitely something to be concerned at especially in that lake marina coming out of lake marina area for those of you who might be launching here in the next couple days or weeks we did see a lot of cool birds like the California bluebirds are so I actually think they're western bluebirds is what they're called I think that they go by either name but there is a California bluebird though I remember seeing just, that in my register always fun to see those yeah. they're so beautiful they got a bright red best breast with vibrant blue everything else and they have such a pretty song they're really mm -hmm. cool birds and I think we did our first water crossing that day oh 
Because, Two of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the first one was a little silly because the recommendation was to like go up over the bridge and we didn't see a bridge, but the bridge was the overpass, like the highway. Um, and then we got to a spot that we thought we could probably clear and Michael cleared it and my jump is not as far as his. And so I got one foot completely in the water. <laughs> uh, so that was fun. But our second one, we actually ran into a couple more hikers, which was super cool. From Austria. Yeah. Uh, Gabriel and <laughs> Sylvia. I don't know if you've gotten trail names yet. But that crossing was pretty cool because there's a couple of really big carp that were swimming around our feet. And one of them like bumped into Michael's poles and he's like, I would have skewered it if I liked eating carp. But <laughs> yeah, I totally could have just speared it with my trekking pole and that would have been fun. But I didn't want to kill the life for no reason. So yeah. Big fish. Yeah, you said we met a couple other hikers. Yeah, didn't we meet Ben and Lydia? Oh, yeah, 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 we did. And we didn't really spend any time with them, though. Hunter? And Hunter. Hunter. They were also at the campsite later on, um, but we didn't really interact with them because we got to the campsite late and had to set up our tent and stuff. But we did end up camping right next to Withdrawn, and he was kind of more our pace. Like, we weren't super quick to get out in the morning or anything, but... Um, I guess that's for day four, so. So anyway, day four, um, we did 10.99 miles. I think you can probably chalk that to 11 for all the government workers out there. <laughs> uh, 2408 in elevation, so definitely a steeper day. That's the steepest that we had thus far. And we were coming into uh, the town of uh, Mount Laguna, a tiny little community up in the mountains. There's like a lodge and a restaurant and a little block of tiny homes. And that's where we ended up staying. We actually crashed there because we were trying to get out of the weather. We would have camped, but uh, they were calling for forecasting for snow that night. And then we ended up getting a couple inches. Most of it was melted by the time we left, but we stayed at the tiny uh, house block and in the hostel there with um, Solomon, the guy that we had met at Lake Marina. And we met Stuart. We met Jacob and we met Mark. Yeah, I'll go on ahead and let you kind of elaborate on the highs and lows of that of that day, day four. The hiking in general was pretty good that day. When we got to Mount Laguna though, like it started to rain, like pretty yeah. much like right as we were getting there. And we had made this plan to stay at this tiny block house, but we didn't think we could check in until four o'clock. So we got there probably around one. Yeah and we're trying to kill time but they have this really awesome little restaurant up the there. outpost the outpost definitely um, recommend it if you're just getting ready to launch when you get to mount laguna stop there the people are nice food's amazing yeah the smash burger's my recommendation <laughs> yeah gabriel and sylvia got there first and that was their recommendation upon leaving and they were spot on yeah um probably the best part though was being able to sit at the bar with the ginormous like heater blowing straight on us because we were so <laughs> cold like the rain had come like we were inside but it, for me as soon as i stopped hiking like my body temperature drops really fast and um yeah it was just a really cool little stop and it was definitely nice to get a shower that night in the tiny house so. Yeah, it was good times. Day five, uh, we hiked 13.59 miles, so our longest day yet. We kind of kicked up a little bit there. We only gained about 1,400 elevation. We were kind of coming down out of Mount Laguna, but there still was a good bit of like ups and downs, so the elevation did count. Uh, we camped at a spot just past Garnet Mountain, and it was cold, windy, rainy, miserable. Um, I'll let you kind of talk about <laughs> that. Yeah, it was terrible. I was not having a good hiking day for sure because it was so cold. And we were looking forward to the spot we were going to stop at for lunch, which was like a day use picnic area. Was it Pioneer Picnic Area? Or? Pioneer Mill Picnic Pioneer Area Mill. or something like that. Yeah. And we were like the hiking was okay as far as like the trail, but we were definitely on like this old road where I'm sure you could look over into some awesome views, but it was so socked in. Yeah, like couldn't you couldn't see really anything. see anything. It was very, very foggy, yeah. the whole hike. Very cold and- Windy. Yeah. Which is weird that it's foggy and windy, but it was foggy and windy. Like yeah. there was a big cloud sitting on the mountain just blowing around and we were stuck in it. We hiked most of that day with Drew. Yeah. Camped um, with him. 
we got to the picnic area and they had pit toilets which were like at least nice and warm but like sitting there to eat was pretty Miserable. rough um i don't know if this technically counts as trail magic but someone had left like a case of apple soda there's like a six pack of apple soda yeah so that was kind of cool to find yeah to get some sweet treat yeah yeah but yeah we woke up the next morning which i guess brings us into day six to ice on our tent which was fun uh me and drew we were just like 10 feet or so from each other we both woke up and we're out scraping ice off of our tent trying to get uh, ready to pack up for that day and on day six we ended up hiking 12.49 miles uh, had a thousand eighty nine elevation gain and day six we ended up camping at this uh, there's a lot of overlanding in Southern California and a, and a lot of the overlanding trails that are they're, they're called roads but they don't look like a road I wouldn't take a normal vehicle out on this thing they're very gnarly but we camped on this place called Rodriguez Spur Truck Trail. And overall, I would say the, the weather was nice, like we didn't have rain and stuff. It was a bit windy because we were kind of up on a hill, but it was, and it was cold, but no wet. And that was really nice. I like no wet. I would say probably that was the best night that we had that first week in terms of weather and camping and stuff like that. But what would you say the highs and lows of, of day six were? Um, my favorite part of that particular day was when we stopped for lunch. Um, I'm not sure if we've met these guys. No, we met them at Mount Laguna, but it's an older couple from Austria named Two Matching Hats. Because they both have matching hats. It's, yeah, they're, they're super cute. cute. Yeah. Um, but we got to this spot, kind of like a low spot with a bunch of campgrounds, but there's like a tiny little stream running through it. And my feet were pretty sore. Um, so we ended up taking probably a good like hour, maybe hour and a half, and like the sun was out. So I laid out on my mat and put my feet up and got to soak my feet and we got to do our Bible reading for the day. And it was just a really nice, nice stop, yeah. I thought. Yeah, it was definitely enjoyable. And one of the cool things about the trails that I've noticed is just like the mineral content of like what we're hiking on. And I'm not a big geology buff or anything, but there's some things where I'm like, oh yeah, that's granite, that's quartz, and there's different colors of those things. But my favorite thing so far has been how sparkly the ground is. And I don't know if it's the same thing that's making everything sparkle. Um, later on, it's been more apparent that it's like mica flakes. Yeah. And that's been really cool because I'm like, oh, I can't believe I remember something from middle school, but... But it looks like gold dust when it gets ground up really fine and it's all over in the dirt. So And it like sticks to the bottom of your shoes. So we had like glittery shoes for <laughs> days. And I know it's Which is more good. exciting for Kate than it was for me, but it was kind yeah, of fun. I loved it. Yeah. It was great. It was good. Mm -hmm. And then so day seven, uh, we hiked uh, 9.19 miles and uh, 610 elevation gain. And that's because we were just kind of coming downhill all day, coming out of those first mountain ranges and we hit a big flat plateau as we were coming into um, the first big like stop point of the trail called Scissors Landing. And in Scissors, Scissors Crossing. or Scissors Crossing, excuse me. And uh, we ended up camping at a place called the Stagecoach Trail RV Park, which is about four miles uh, just east of the Pacific Crest Trail so you have to either walk out there or hitchhike out there. We ended up getting a hitch out there. I'll let Caitlin kind of go over the details of that day because it was a super fun day. But um, we stayed there that night and the people there were really nice. They had good food there and, and the prices were a little bit cheaper than in town, but there wasn't as much selection. So if you want a little bit more specific things for your diet, I'd recommend resupplying in Julian. Uh, but if you don't really care, the Stagecoach does have quite a bit to offer and reasonably priced for trail price food. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit more expensive. But at any rate, why don't you go on ahead and tell them about the things that we got to see that day. Because that was a very cool day for us. Definitely. So I did forget to mention about the day before. Like my feet were killing me. The blisters were getting really bad. Getting real bad. Starting to get infected. And then that is the day I think my knee slash oh, leg yeah. started hurting like I stepped down something kind of twisted wrong twisted or popped and I was in a lot of pain and I think I was mostly just like tired and worried and 
ended up <laughs> I did had myself a good cry that night and um, before he left our campsite the next morning so this is day seven uh, withdrawn checked in on me and this was where he was ending his hike scissors crossing scissors crossing was and he said you know like if you guys need to ride into Julian like my wife is gonna pick me up like I'll wait for you because he left probably like an hour or two before we did because we were moving slow because of your injuries yeah. yeah and that was just like a very generous offer and that was encouraging super but nice also guy like okay we got to get there um I think we had, like had to go around these mountains and as we were coming down again we came into this different biosphere and there's like more cactuses and um, lots of cottontail bunnies yeah all the bunnies and then lots as of soon lizards. as we got down like probably my favorite to the part plateau, yeah. down to the plateau where we could like just walk on flat ground which was also a blessing for my injuries uh, there's tons of jackrabbits and their huge ears just make you so happy and yeah they're so cute like and they zip out. around oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah we came around the corner and caitlin saw one stretched out in the shade all spread out mm -hmm. like just relaxing for the day yeah so that was pretty cool and then we came in crossed the the highway and went to the underpass which is the san san felipe creek yeah and i was like making some big joke about like oh yeah we're crossing this creek that's really just a big dry bed and as I'm like thinking that we will walk underneath and here's withdrawn off to our left he's sitting in some lawn chairs and ahead of us is a water cache that someone set up so there's a bunch of, bunch of like milk jugs of water and then we found a cooler sitting there as well that was full of Dr. Pepper and Coke and like lunch supplies so like tortillas and pepperoni and the sauce to make like little pizzas and cheeses and meats mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff so that was our first experience with trail magic and yeah. we were so happy about it it was, it was so, so cool encouraging for sure yeah and, and then a lady came up to me and uh, who we later found out was her, her trail angel name she's a trail angel and her trail angel name is minnie they call her Minnie because she drives a Mini Cooper, but she just volunteers on the weekends. She drives up to this spot from Orange County, which is about two hours away, and just volunteers her gas, her car, her time to drive people from Scissors Landing into Julian, which is about 11 miles uh, to where you can resupply if you want. And she offered to take us, and from everybody that we had talked to, they said that she was amazing and just a lot of fun, and so uh, we went with her and uh, we, she told us when we got to town, she's like, you gotta go check out this place called Moms. It's a pie place. I guess Moms, like the woman who started this, I think hiked the yep, PCT she did. herself. And so she has a soft spot for other PCT hikers. And when you go into her business, if you're a PCT hiker, you get a free piece of pie, a free scoop of ice cream, and a free beverage of whatever you want that they serve, obviously. And it was pretty cool, cause like I'd been, I on the trail so far I've been really craving fruit juice and I was just craving juice so bad like <laughs> five miles back and I was like oh talking man, about it so good yeah and they do a home squeezed like fancy apple cider mm -hmm. that is legit I think the best apple cider I've ever had like it was, it was so, good. so good yeah and the pies were amazing the ice cream was so good and the people were so friendly. So yeah. if you are coming into Julian, be sure to go to Julian, go to Mom's, get your free stuff, and enjoy that little gem of the trail. It's definitely worth it. Yeah, Julian was definitely not what I expected at all. We came into it thinking it's like a tiny little nothing town, but it was a, a crazy town. hub of activity. It was super Very cute, touristy for very touristy. the LA group, yeah. I think San Diego. San Diego, Diego probably more than LA, yeah, excuse me. And it was super up. crowded and everybody was out sorry I didn't mean to cut you off but yeah it was it was pretty busy the, the roads up though yeah yeah the roads up to these mountain towns were terrible for me like going from hiking all week and not being in a vehicle to getting into a vehicle and going up the craziest roads ever and here's this trail angel named Minnie so she's driving a Mini Cooper and she's been doing it like <laughs> all the weekends like she's super comfortable with these roads and they're going so fast I'm like I do not like this. I am definitely car sickness prone, and they definitely that get was a little rough sickness, for yeah. sure. Um, so I was glad not to be staying in Julian. So after our time in Julian, uh, Minnie drove us out to the stagecoach, so we didn't have to hike that extra five miles or whatever, four and a half, whatever it is. 
and uh, we stayed the night there. We made the decision to take an extra day to stay two nights there. Um, that way we could take our first zero. A zero is just where you do zero miles for the day. So you might hear that as we go uh, throughout this blog. But uh, we, we took our first zero there, let Kate rest up. They had hot showers that were included in the price of the stay, which was super nice. We got some laundry done. Uh, I was able to put out uh, my first video uh, from there, which was insanely difficult, man. The technology aspect of things, doing everything off the phone is so different. And I just had a lot of complications. It took me like six hours to produce a five minute video <laughs> and it was very frustrating, but we got it out. Um, and that pretty much concludes our, our week there. It was windy the couple nights that we stayed there. There's a lot of wind that comes through that valley. Um, so just expect a lot of wind that way you're not surprised, but we did manage to get to the campground like at the perfect time. There was like two hours before they closed for the night, but then they are also closed Sunday and Monday. Monday, yeah. So that's a good warning to put out for other future hikers. The stagecoach does close Sunday and Monday. So they do have an after hours box where you can pay your money and stay, but, but you won't be able to resupply no. if you're there on Sunday, Monday. And that's huge to know. And they also give you a free scoop of ice cream. So. Or a coffee, yeah. Oh, yeah. You get your coffee. choice. We wanted ice cream. And their ice cream is good. So mm -hmm. if you like ice cream, Rocky Road, uh, Caitlin got uh, chocolate chip mint. Mm -hmm. And highly recommend it. So. Yeah, it was a sweet place to stay. Uh, a really pretty sunsets. We ended up staying with Stuart again. And two, and matching, two matching hats. hats that night. So in the little PC tent camping area pct pct camp that? area yeah. yeah so anyways that was our first week i hope that that was informative if you're a pct hiker looking to see kind of what it's like if uh your family and friends uh that was uh, a, a good way to start we thank you for all the support and uh love that you guys have shown through text and all that stuff but uh we'll keep you posted with week two thanks guys talk to you later bye